Hello friends, in this video I am going to show you how to implement the MQTT protocol on your Arduino board. For the demonstration of the implementation, we will send MQTT messages from the Arduino board through the GSM module SIM900 to a cloud MQTT server. And we will also try to subscribe to a MQTT topic and see that we can receive the MQTT messages from the cloud MQTT server to the Arduino board through the GSM module. To understand this tutorial better, you need to look at these other videos which I have did on the MQTT protocol. In these videos, I explain what are the important control packets of the MQTT protocol and I also explain what each byte of the protocol packet means. So to understand the tutorial better, I advise that you watch these two tutorials which is the MQTT protocol tutorial, packet analysis and SIM900 or SIM800 based MQTT tutorial wherein I send MQTT packets over the TCP connection created by the JSIM module. In this tutorial also basically we are doing the same thing but instead of doing it manually through the serial port terminal we will be sending the MQTT packets using the code written in the Arduino board. So to get started. If you watch this video about the packet analysis, you, you see that I had created this excel sheet which, which will give us an idea on the structure of the control packets and you will come to know what are the connect packets, publish packet and the subscribe packets are. As soon as the connection is established to the MQTT broker, the, we send the connect packets identification number which is hexadecimal 10, we send the remaining length packet uh, protocol name length and the protocol name and the level flags and the flags which indicate whether there is an authentication packet followed by the connect packet and we also send the keep alive intervals and the client id length and the client id so this is the this is basically the connect packet we don't want authentication and if you are using authentication then we will send the connect packet identification number the remaining length packet and the protocol name length and the protocol name is mqsdp in case of the cloud mqtt server which we are using right now and these are the level flags and the flags for authentication and keep alive intervals client ID length and the only addition will be the username and the password along with the username length and the password length of two bytes each. So using this packet structure I have implemented this code. So this is the code which I have implemented based on this excel sheet here. So basically I have created some temporary variables and which hold the length of the fields. For example here is the MQTT protocol name length which holds the value of the protocol name length field which is of 2 bytes. So I declared it as unsigned short and the, similarly the client ID length, username length and the password length. So here are here they are client ID length, username length and password length. So instead of hard coding everything I will be dynamically calculating the length of each fields using the strl alien function. Here are the static values which are the authentication values or the uh, server details which are given by the cloud MQTT server. So once you create the account in cloud MQTT server you will get all these credentials and the port numbers to which you can connect to and see the data. So this is what I have done I just copied this name crm10.cloudmqtt.com port number and client ID is any dummy number which you can give you will understand that if you, once you watch the earlier video which I had explained and uh, this is the topic name it can be anything you want it's a, a protocol name which is supported by the standard MQTT version 3.1.1 and then we set the levels and uh, flags to indicate whether there is a username and password present in the connect packet and then we set the keep alive intervals so these are all the uh, const variables which I have declared which will be used uh, directly in the code below so to begin with I initialized the serial port uh, to which the GSM module is connected to 9600 bits per second and I print a test message called Arduino MQT tutorial Valetron systems and my website name. So after that I create a short delay. Remember that this is this script is just written, written for testing and it's, it's not a foolproof code uh, wherein it takes care of all the error handling and everything. I just put in some delays for in to wait for the response from the GSM module and the code assumes that everything will go right. So in case you are implementing your own professional version of this you need to take care of all the responses given by the module the errors and you need to look at the status of the connections and take your action based on whether you need to send the next packet or not. So before we do anything we initialize the serial port and then uh, what we do is we create a GPRS connection to the server. For this what we do is we uh, 
uh, we set the APN values which is www in, key, in my case and I wait for a short period for the module to respond and then I set the TCP connection mode to non-transparent mode and then I enable the GPRS connection using the 80 plus CIICR command. Remember that this command might take a while to respond so I put a larger delay for this. So after this what we do is we create a TCP connection to the cloud MKTT server and the given port number. Once the connection is established then we can send our connect packet, the publish packet or the subscribe packet. So what I have done is I call this function which sends the connect packet. So this function uh, assembles all the bytes necessary to form the connect packet as shown here. So if we go to this connect packet function as you can see the first statement which I called is the CIP send statement. This command will prompt us to enter the data that needs to be sent to the server. So I call this function and then I wait for the prompt for 3 seconds and then I send the uh, identification code for the connect packet which is 10 in as shown here. Then I calculate all the length parameters for the protocol name length, the client ID length, username length and the password length. So these are the parameters which I have declared here above. So I just calculate the length of them and then keep in these variables. Then I calculate the total remaining length uh, which will be stored in this data length variable by adding up all these length values. So this adds up uh, to this by adding the protocol name length and the total bytes of the protocol name and the LVL FL flags and the keep alive intervals 2 bytes, 2 bytes of CID length and uh, 5 bytes of client ID and the username length and the total username bytes and these two bytes for the password length and the password itself. So it will add all these bytes together and store it in the data length variable. So this data length variable will contain the RL field which is mentioned here. Uh, this code which, uh, which I have written here is actually given in the protocol itself which actually uh, does the calculation by itself to determine how many bytes need to be sent for the remaining length parameter. So this remaining length field is not actually limited to single bytes. If the message is longer then it, you can use two digits, three digits, four digits like this. But there is a special encoding used for that and they also give you algorithm to calculate that. So I just implemented this algorithm in the ordinary code. So it automatically prints the remaining length parameter as the first thing. So initially we printed the identification number for the connect packet and then we print out the remaining length field using this algorithm here. Then we send out the protocol name length which is 2 bytes so we send it byte by byte by shifting and ending it. And then we send the protocol name itself which is MQISTP and then we send the MQTT LVL and MQTT flags C2 and then we again print out the MQTT keep alive interval which is 2 bytes so we, we print it twice by shifting and ending it. And then we send the set the client ID length then we put all these parameters out client ID, username, username length and the password also at the end. So once we uh, put out all these things we need to put out the character, we need to print the character 0x1a which will uh, start sending the packet to the server. So once we send this packet a connection will be established and then we can send our published packets or the subscribe packets. So once we have send the connect packet, we come here, uh, we wait for some time for the server to respond and then we start sending the published packet. So in the published packet what we do is we send the topic we want to publish to. The format is shown here. First we send the published packet identification by its remaining length and the topic length which is uh, while on here and uh, the topic length is 8 bytes. So we print out all these parameters and then we send out our messages. First when we are sending the published packet what we do is we send out the identification number for the published packet and then we print out the remaining length and the topic length which is Valetron so it counts the number of bytes in Valetron and it adds here. So we send 0008 for Valetron and then we send the Valetron name itself in ASCII and then we send our message. So let us look at the published packet now. As you can see first time sending the CIP send command which will uh, start accepting the bytes to send to the server. So first I do, what I do is I clear the buffer here str. Then I calculate the topic length so, so that I get this value 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0008. And then uh, I get the total data length which is the count of these two Valetron followed by Hello Ravi. So these two are printed into the str variable 
or the array so i get the topic plus instead of hello rovi i am printing the content of a variable called counter so it will be an unsigned integer and a total string will be formed which will be printed later so the sprintf function prints everything for formed as a complete string including the topic and the counter into the str variable and it also returns the number of bytes printed so i get the data length also or the remaining length so first uh, after this i send the identification number for the publish packet which is 0x30 and after this i add two bytes to the data length because the two bytes will uh, accommodate for the topic length here these two bytes and then uh, the algorithm prints out the remaining length bytes at start so this number will be printed and after that uh, we send out the topic length uh, variable which is two bytes so this 0008 gets printed here and after that the str which is valid round followed by the counter variable contents will be printed here after this we send out the one a character to uh, initiate the uh, sending of the message to the server and once this is done the message will reach to the server and we should be able to see that so in this loop what i am doing is i am actually incrementing the counter and waiting for 5 seconds and publishing a uh, mqtt packet every 5 seconds so uh, let us try to you know run this code and see what happens so we can see the incoming message using the websocket ui provided by cloudmqtt.com Now I'll open the terminal and then restart the GSM module also. So it is working according to the code and it is in it has initialized the apn values and set the uh, communication mode to non transparent and uh, and established uh, gprs connection set up the tcp connection and start sending the connect packet mkids sptp and the username and the password okay as you can see the message zero is sent to the topic valetron here so we are getting the messages here valetron zero valetron one like that so the variable is continuously getting incremented in the loop and sent out every five seconds so the mqtt publish is working correctly and next we will see how we can subscribe to a topic and wait for an incoming message and take any action based on that so for this i have written the subscribe uh, packet also subscribe packet is quite simple and it's very similar to the uh, publish packet and uh, similarly we will send the 80 plus cip send at first and then we calculate the topic length and we calculate the total data length which is the topic uh, length itself plus two bytes for the topic length uh, parameter and then we add the length of the packet id and the quality of service at the end so that's what i have done here and after calculating data length uh, we send out the identification code which is 0x82 for the subscribe packet and then we print out the remaining length field using the algorithm uh, given on the mkt site and then we print out the remaining length uh, parameter as i said before and then we send out the mqtt packet id at the start so this is the two byte packet id so we send out the higher byte first and then the lower byte and then we print out the topic uh, length two bytes and then we print out the topic itself which is valid from here and then we send out the qos byte after that we send 0x1 at the end as usual to initiate the communication to demonstrate the subscribing mechanism of the mqtt protocol i have made some small changes to the code here i have declared a variable called led and i have in, uh, which will be used to turn on and off the led on the arduino board so i initialize the led port as output and i will be controlling that led based on the incoming message from the 
subscription topic. So once the TCP connection is established, we send out the connect packet and after some delay, we send out a subscribe packet. Here in the main loop, what I am doing is, I am reading all the bytes that are coming into the serial port after sending the subscribe packet. Because in this Arduino serial terminal, we cannot see what is uh, incoming to us, but we can only see what is printed by the Arduino. So here what I am doing is, I am reading that byte in the str variable 0th location and uh, I am printing it out onto the serial port so that we can see what is coming from the server. And based on what is coming from the server, if the if any of the byte that is coming from the server is having a, a value 1 in ASCII or 0, based on these two values, I am controlling an LED to high or low. So if it's 1, uh, then uh, the LED is turned on and if it's 0, then the LED is turned off. Now let us see how this code will function. We'll program the board now. Okay, now let us see if we can publish a message to Valetron. I'm sending 0 now. We can see that the message Valetron 0 has arrived on the Arduino board. And I will send 1. So the LED should turn on now. As you can see, the LED has been turned on. I'll turn it off again. okay the subscription is working correctly so here you can include any of your messages and test out the subscription process okay so the mqtt protocol communication via tcp using sim 900 works very fast compared to the http connections so you can implement real time uh, control or uh, real-time communication using MQTT protocol over TCP using SIM 900 module. As you can see, the server closed the TCP connection because uh, we didn't send out any ping packets. So it keeps uh, Unity keeps sending ping packets uh, if you are uh, waiting for a message continuously. So uh, when you are waiting for a long time, keep sending some packets or some messages so that the server thinks that the connection is active. So this is how you can send and receive MQTT packets using the Arduino board with the help of the GSM modules like SIM900. In my next video, I will show you how you can communicate to the io.adafruit.com server using the SIM900 GSM module and the MQTT protocol. So that's all for now. If you like this video, hit the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more such content. Thank you for watching.